I would like to acknowledge that this video is being filmed on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to their elders past and present, and extend that respect to any Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander or First Nations people who may be watching this video today. Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Recently I shared a monster romance recommendation video and suggested that I might consider doing some other recommendations for other more traditional paranormal creatures and you guys said yes, so here we are with the first of those videos. This is quite a long list so I'm not going to go into the books in depth. I'm going to do this more like my A to Z of romance style where I've got a couple of keywords and maybe a sentence about the book and then move on because otherwise we're going to be here forever. We're going to be talking about shifters and vampires. I have to say I tend to gravitate more towards shifter books than I do vampire books but you know I enjoy all of them. Okay we're going to start with shifters and I can't start this video without mentioning the Green Creek series by TJ Klune. I've talked about this series ad nauseum. It is MM werewolf shifters set in a small town. The really cool thing about this if you read the entire series is that the world gets built up and we learn a lot more about the politics of the werewolves and the shifters in this world. While recommending this I'm going to talk less about the romance and more about the fact that this has a very interesting setup for how these characters interact because the Bennett family that we meet in here are considered almost werewolf royalty but they leave that behind to return to this small town when tragedy strikes the families. In later books we see them reintegrating back into being part of sort of the political scene in the world. So very very cool setup for the world in here even if the book individual books focus on separate romances. I also can't not include the Psy Changeling series by Nalini Singh. Not every book in here features shifters but the majority of them do and we have a range of types of shifters from wolves to leopards, jaguars and ocelots to bears to sea creatures in ocean light. So you have a lot of variety in here. They are all fantastic. The way that this world is set up and the way the different packs are set up are fantastic. We learn a lot about how the hierarchy works in this world which is the part that I, I find most fascinating about the Psy Changeling books is how all of these communities function and work and then we learn so much more over the course of the series. 100% you would start at the first book in this one which looks at the Dark River Leopard Pack. You guys know I love this series. I have an entire playlist where I go through each individual book so I'll leave that linked on the screen. Another series that I have to mention because I'll get told off if I don't <laughs> is the Kate Daniel series. I, I'm kidding I would never not include this on this list. This is more an urban fantasy series that follows one couple throughout 10 books and we have Kate who has an incredible amount of magic on her own but she ends up falling for Curran who is the Beast Lord of Atlanta and the Beast Lord is in charge of ensuring that all of the shifters in Atlanta don't go feral or rogue. It's a huge heavy responsibility. Curran is a lion shifter but a special kind of lion that you find out later in the series and he has to manage all of the different groups. There's a lot of political stuff going on. It's very very interesting, very fascinating and there are so many different types of shifters that we meet looking at their skill sets and things like that throughout the series. I mean I love the the romance and I love Kate's story but I also love finding out about how the shifters in this world work. So another really great series. The Stay a Spell series by Juliet Cross has two shifter books. There is Wolf Gone Wild which is book one and book three which is Get Stitches. These feature Mateo and Nico who are cousins and again this is really interesting because this is a very contemporary setting. It's set in New Orleans. In the first book Mateo has been sort of cursed and so he's struggling with managing his wolf side and his human side and in the third book Nico is trying to carve out a life for himself and to try and turn his life around. Their relationship with each other and their relationship with their respective partners is really interesting. Another series that everyone just you know continually teases me about is the Relic series by Maz Maddox which is Dinosaur Shifters. These are MM romances. They are really fun. Like they're just hilarious and enjoyable and short. All of the characters are a little bit bananas and I appreciate that about them and also who doesn't like dinosaur shifters? I mean seriously. Another series I've talked about a lot recently is the Mystic Bayou series by Molly Harper. This is an Audible original series but you can get ebooks for them and this is set in the small town of Mystic Bayou. It is a town where lots of Majit live and have hidden away from the human world for a long time. There are lots of shifters in this world. There are dragons, there are bears, there are selkies, you name it, there's someone in this town and it's got a really cozy feel to it. Then there's Mating the Huntress by Talia Hibbert. I haven't talked about this book in a while. This is a very short paranormal romance between a woman whose family have always hunted the monsters in the world and when a werewolf walks into her family's coffee shop she recognizes him straight away and is determined to save the rest of the world from him by killing him. 
but when they find themselves alone she realizes that maybe maybe that's not the best idea and that maybe there is something that exists between them. There is Feral Sins by Suzanne Wright. This is about a latent female wolf shifter who finds herself being mated to this I want to kind of say unhinged wolf alpha in an attempt to escape from being in an arranged marriage to a wolf who's even worse than he is. These two characters have to work really hard to find an equilibrium and you know a space where they coexist peacefully. There is Dragonbound by Thea Harrison. This is a dragon shifter book and the heroine in this is blackmailed into stealing something from a dragon's horde and when the dragon finds out he chases after her. In the end he spares her life only to claim it as his own and so he recognizes that she is possibly his mate and she doesn't know anything about that at the time and this was honestly just delightful. I actually really enjoyed this series. I need to continue it at some point. There is The Tyrant Elfers Rejected Mate by Kate C. Wells. This is about a another latent wolf shifter who was injured as a child and so she has a physical disability now as an adult. She is sort of seen as the lower class in her pack and then one night all of a sudden her mating bond with the alpha kicks in and he denies it and rejects her in front of the entire pack. At first she's devastated then she gets pissed and she has a witch basically sever the mating bond which then drives him completely crazy because he realizes that he wants her and she will have no bar of him and it is amazing. Primal by Jessica Gadziella is another wolf shifter book. This one is a shorter story. It is about a woman who ends up inheriting her grandmother's cottage in the woods. One night she gets lost and she thinks she sees a man turning into a wolf then puts it down to a dream and then finds out that maybe that was closer to reality than she first thought. Another recent read was Queenie and the Krakens by Alira Anaya Serres. This is Merman Shifters and also the heroine is a mermaid shifter as well. And more than that, this is a Why Choose Merman Shifter MC romance with a kick-ass heroine who constantly saves herself and is easily a favourite read from September. There is Run Rabbit Run by C.M. Descosta. This is another Wolf Shifters book and it is a workplace romance between two wolves who work as lawyers. Their relationship is a little bit toxic and they need to figure out exactly what it is that they want from one another and there is a lot of various Primal Play kinks that are included in here, but it was a fun time to read it if you can get past the fact that they need to sort out a lot of their issues. And then the last one on my shifters recommendations list is, well for now anyway, is The Rogue King by Abigail Owen. This is a dragon shifter book where we have a rogue dragon who has to kidnap a phoenix shifter and return her to his king only he forms a connection with her and he doesn't want to let her go. This one leans more fantasy than paranormal but he does shift between a dragon form so I thought I would include it anyway. All right and then moving in to vampires we have the Guild Hunter series by Nalini Singh. Every book features vampires but vampires are not always the main thread of the books in this series so you'll have to check which ones do feature the vampires. However I did want to mention this one because the angels in here are, have very vampiric qualities. They do have the teeth and they do bite. It's, this one's sort of a grey area in this list but I did want to mention it anyway. There is Hunger Like No Other by Cressley Cole or the entire Immortals After Dark series. I've only read a few books in it. This series was not 100% for me but so many people love it so I could not include it on this list. We have a werewolf who has been tortured for a very long time by vampires who finally escapes and then he finds his mate only to realize that she is at least part vampire and is rather annoyed by that fact. There is Halfway to the Grave by Janine Frost. Again this is another series that I started and I know so many people love it. It was not always to my personal taste but again I'm I think I'm just very picky with vampire romances so we'll we're just gonna go with it. This is about a half vampire heroine who is hunting down vampires and killing them in order to try and track down her vampire father who she is very annoyed at because he treated her mother appallingly. She ends up teaming up with another vampire called Bones who ends up training her and then she sort of becomes this really kick-ass vampire slash demon hunting heroine. There is the Their Vampire Queen series by Jolly Sue Burkhart. There are a lot of content warnings in this one mostly for a lot of blood and other things going on but this is a why choose paranormal vampire romance. It's about a woman who is coming into her own power and understanding of what it means to be in this paranormal world and she has a lot of men around her or a lot of vampires around her who end up allying her themselves with her and she draws a lot of her power from drinking blood. There is Sanguine by Sierra Simone. This is an MM short story that is set in Queensland. It is about a vampire who is on holiday who ends up being confronted by a former vampire hunting priest. There is Kiss of Steel by Beck McMaster. This is a steampunk story with vampires and werewolves. It's a little bit more urban fantasy than paranormal romance. The heroine is on the run and ends up allying herself with an outcast vampire who lives on the wrong side of London. This was great and I really need to continue this series. 
There is A Dark Vampire Curse by Nikki St. Crow. This is about a cursed vampire king who believes that the heroine is the key to break the curse that turns vampires feral. There is Iron and Velvet by Alexis Hall. This is the first book in the Kate Kane series and again more urban fantasy than romance. It is sapphic and it features a half fae investigator who is hired by one of the vampire princes of London to investigate a murder that takes place outside of the vampire prince's bar. And of course Kate Kane in here has sworn never to work with vampires and this book just proves to her why she had made that decision. There is One Bite with a Vampire by Louisa Masters. This is part of a series but you could probably read this one on its own if you wanted to. It's the second book in the series. This is an MM workplace romance between an 800 year old vampire and a human man who has been hired sort of as an intern to work for this government agency and he's the only human currently working there and so he deals with a lot of prejudice as a result of that. There is New World Stay With Me by Lily X. This is, this one's gonna be a really short recommendation because it is sapphic space vampires who live on a farm. There is Taste, a vampire quickie by Nikki Clark. This is another really short paranormal novella featuring a 200 year old vampire who doesn't really know how she came to be and she ends up finding companionship where she least expected to find it. There is The Court of the Vampire Queen books by Katie Robert. These were formerly published as separate stories but are now published as one volume and this book features a heroine who is desperate to escape the control of her father and ends up traded to this very powerful vampire called Malachi who ends up opening her eyes to her own capabilities and her own wants because she ends up in this becomes a why choose poly situation between three vampires and the heroine. This one I would check content warnings it is very there's a lot of blood in this one so just be aware of that going into it. And the final series on this list is the Phenomenal Fates series by Tessa Bailey. These are very contemporary vampire romance stories. They were a lot of fun when I first read them. I haven't read them for a while. The first book opens with the director of a funeral home witnessing a body come back to life and basically walking out and that sets her on a path to understanding that vampires are real and the subsequent books there's two there's three books in the series altogether, I believe, all feature characters who we meet in this first book. All right, so those are my Shifter and Vampire Paranormal Romance recommendations. In the comments, I'd love to know if you've read any of them or what would you add to the list? So feel free to recommend some other books down below. If you wanna let me know that you're here but you don't wanna leave a comment, you can either leave a vampire emoji or you can leave an animal emoji for a shifter animal that you would like to see in a book or it could just be your favorite shifter animal. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.